One of the EU's top airlines, budget carrier Ryanair, is continuing with its dispute. It's excuse me, it's continuing its dispute with Germany over what it says are excessive airport levies. Now, the airline releasing a lengthy statement on Monday, blasting plans to raise securities to security fees again in January, saying that Germany's overall fee structure is in fact reducing the competitive competitiveness of smaller players like Ryanair, which then plays into the hands of flag carrier Lufthansa, and in turn reduces consumer choice. Now, both Ryanair and EasyJet have reduced their presence in Germany, despite expanding elsewhere in Europe. Eddie Wilson is CEO of Ryanair. He joins me in studio for more on this topic. Eddie, thank you for coming in. Good Thanks morning, for talking Stephen. to us. Thank um, you. Let's start with what's going right for Ryanair. In the past quarter, passengers' numbers were up very nicely. Profit was up even more nicely, perhaps. Um, Ryanair has surged over the post-pandemic hump. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, we were the uh, best recovered airline coming out of COVID. We kept all of our people employed and uh, we kept our licenses current because we knew this had to be over at some stage. So we've recovered to almost 130% of pre-COVID capacity and we've been able to expand throughout Europe, but sadly not in the way we would want to in Germany. Let's talk about that. Um, Germany has not fully recovered from uh, for Ryanair business. That is, it hasn't been a full uh, recovery to pre-pandemic times. Is that correct? Well, Germany hasn't recovered, like, period, like, in, uh, in aviation. Um, Germany has recovered to 77%, the worst performing uh, aviation market in Europe. Okay, you say for, that... You for said... right across capacity, not just Ryanair, for everybody. As, as a matter of fact, Ryanair has marginally grown uh, in that period, but the overall market mm -hmm. for aviation seats in Germany has contracted. Okay, Ryanair points to fees as making its business in Germany much more difficult. How important for a low-cost carrier are these kind of fees that you're seeing at airports right now in uh, Germany? Well, I think it's important that consumers who have bailed out your national carrier here to the tune of 11 billion uh, euros, um, and what has happened is they haven't recovered. They're the largest carrier in the market. They have constrained capacity, which has put fares through the roof. Like Germans at the moment are paying some, sometimes in the order of 800 euros for one-way fares. But what is happening now is that security taxes are rising, which goes on to the fare ultimately, and the German system is hopelessly inefficient compared to, to other countries in Europe. And it is in, in the medium to long term here, German consumers are in for a long period of sustained high pricing because there's, there's no competition and char the charging structure at German airports is now effectively a barrier to entry. The German government would say that those security fees, which they've been raising uh, consistently, have to be paid. They would point perhaps to the airports, the way that they've suffered during the pandemic. Not all of them have great finances. Um, and the argument could be made that uh, the state, that is taxpayers, will have to pay those fees if the airlines don't. No, but is that a hard sell to make, though, no, no, here no, in no, Germany? No, 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 it's hopefully, uh, it, 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 it's not a, a correct analysis. For example, Madrid Airport had no queues this summer, and it was four euros for, for an aviation uh, tax. And in Germany, there's a cap of 10. Some airports are actually charging 12 euros. There is less processing time. If you go to Frankfurt Airport, and these figures are freely available, they do 80 passengers per hour through a lane. Gatwick Airport does 263. It is a system that means that it's passed on for consumers. If I was to tell you when you went to Frankfurt Main Airport, if you had to pay the airport charges, it would cost you as a consumer 52 euros to walk through the terminal. 52 euros to walk through a terminal. I mean, like they're scanning baggage and it is a fraction of that elsewhere in Europe. Once costs go up, they're passed on to fares. The only airlines that actually make something out of that are the incumbent carriers who couldn't care less. If they've got less seats, the prices are higher, no competition, sustained high prices for consumers, and that's the thanks they got for bailing out this airline for 11 billion euros. Which they made money on, we should mention, uh, at the end also, of the day. It was also <laughs> illegal, right, according to the European Union. Um, and what has happened is that is a dysfunctional, like, while well, we had to do extraordinary measures mm. during COVID. Let's just leave that behind us. This is about German consumers today and their ability to have choice. If the German government put up the cap today, the regional airports are going to be hit hardest because it's a higher proportion of their costs. There will be less capacity, and that'll mean even higher airfares. The simple question has to be asked, having bailed out the airline to 11 billion euros, mm. why haven't they recovered to over 100%? Is it because it doesn't suit them? 
is it difficult for governments who have a stake in these airports to find the right fee structure when they oftentimes only have one major airport? These aren't secondary regional airports when you look at major areas like Berlin, like Frankfurt for the most part, uh, like Munich, for example, where Ryanair has done really well in these secondary and regional airports. Mm. If they're trying to find a common fee structure, isn't that then difficult no, uh, knowing not. where to put it? But everyone else does it. Like, well, the system is broken. Ryanair is the largest airline in Berlin. This is the capital city of the largest economy in Europe. And we're going to, our, our traffic will fall by 25%. And guess what? Our market share will go up by 3%. EasyJet have abandoned almost 50% of their based aircraft here in Berlin. Because what has happened is that all the traffic has been funneled into Frankfurt and Munich. And that suits the incumbent airline where no competition can take place and where places that things should take place. Why shouldn't people in Nuremberg or Baden-Baden or regional airports like that have direct connections. And if you increase the taxes there, that means it's harder for Ryanair to, uh, to turn a profit there. And because we have aircraft and not factories, those aircraft can migrate to more efficient economies elsewhere. So choices are lower, prices are higher. Um, do you have any kind of consumer groups or advocates that are working with you here in Germany saying this is a problem, middle term, long term, right now already? I think like for consumers, I mean, consumers only, consumers are always at the pointy end. Um, if they don't have the choice, they can't, they can't, um, uh, they can't take action. Right. It's up to uh, governments to look at what's the economic uh, impact of this. If this were telephone roaming charges or if it were if it were internet charges or if it were electricity charges, then people would be would be on this because they can see exactly what they're what they're being charged. But there's no opportunity here for competition in the way that it should be. We're the largest airline in, in Europe. We are the one that is growing the fastest. We'll do 185 million passengers this year. But why are we not putting that into Germany, the largest economy in in, in, uh, in Europe? Because charges are too high and it's easier for us to, to have a profitable business elsewhere. And the only people who win is Lufthansa, and those who lose are German consumers. What leverage does Ryanair have? Is it willing to pull out of uh, Berlin like it pulled out of Frankfurt? Uh, it's not a question of pulling out. It's a question of, look, there's a regulatory framework here. If you allow, if the government today decide we are going to increase the cap for security charges from 10 euros to, they're speculating, up to 28 euros. In 2024. That will have yeah. an eight and a half billion impact on the German economy. I'm not saying it. It's what an independent report says today. It says that there will be 16 million less passengers and 90, 95 less routes. Germans, normal, ordinary Germans are saying at the moment is, where have all the routes gone? Like, the routes have gone because they've contracted routes. The main players, the number one and number two carriers in this market, are constraining demand artificially to drive up prices. And the government, instead of putting up prices even further, should find a way of being more efficient like other European countries. Because when this economy gets back to normal GDP growth, like airline traffic isn't all about going on your holidays. It's about connectivity for business, visiting friends and relatives, seeing kids in college, etc., medical appointments. And if that, if, if you don't have the, the, the cost structure in there, it won't grow with GDP. And what will happen is that airfares will skyrocket in the years to come. Is that politically, though, a harder sell in Europe right now? We look at what happened in Italy, for example. Uh, last week, this announcement that they're going to cap airfares from the islands to the mainland. You had some very um, sharp words to say about that and how you solve that. Is it not, uh, are we not going to see this more often? That no, yeah, governments I mean, in a yeah. kind of uh, uh, populist economics, they're really going to try and put more on the companies uh, and say, look, we're going to put more or less on the taxpayers. Is that not something that you're but, facing but, but, off no, against no, no, more I mean, and more? No, I think what you're seeing is that you're not comparing like with like there. Initially, they're trying to uh, implement the price cap on the last two or three seats. Like there's a, under European law, you're allowed to set your own prices and the market is the market and governments, I mean, the Italians like have been trying, we're running Alitalia for the last 70 years with respect. They're the last people who should be talking about pricing on, on airlines given the track record there. But look, that's against European law. Today is within the ambit of the German government who are going to make a vital piece of infrastructure, regardless of who fills that, whether it's Lufthansa, Eurowings, Ryanair, EasyJet. We, you, you need a functioning airline and airport system to support your economy. And there are structural things happening at the moment post-COVID that are going to hamper the growth of the aviation sector in, um, in Germany over the next number of years. And there doesn't seem to be any obvious solution here, except that the incumbent airlines will make more money on a per-passenger basis and are oblivious 
couldn't care less about the charging structure because mm. they'll just pass it on. This is something that has to happen then on a federal level. I imagine most of these airports yeah. would love to be able to s reduce their fees to some extent to be able to bring in low-cost routes, things like that. Is that where the problem is, is on the federal level or even on the EU level? Well, once, well, once what you do is that even at a fed, if you leave a federal level aside, airports should be al allowed to set their own prices. Um, and should be able to, because other European countries can do that, because all your costs ultimately go into the price for the airline and they make the decision as to what fare they can put in to get a reasonable return. At the moment, that is not comparable with the rest of Europe. As a matter of fact, it's completely out of kilter. And if this goes through, and we've written to both ministers today to say, if you put this through, it's going to be detrimental, never mind to Ryanair, but generally to the economy, you won't be able to support GDP growth when it comes back. You're going to lose jobs. You're going to lose eight and a half billion—a direct hit to GDP in this economy—and you are going to you're going to go back to the bad old days of funneling into just Munich and Frankfurt. And if you don't live near there, then German consumers are going to be uh, are going to be disadvantaged from that. Is that still? Uh, I go back to this question: Is that a harder argument to make right now in this just in this German political atmosphere right now? When we talk about essentially providing more choice for domestic flights, people understand that on one level. But at the same time, there's been this discussion of reducing domestic flights in general, trying to move things more to rail. Is it just getting harder to make this argument? Even if technically you're right, you're reducing choice, you're raising prices, but that this is a hard fight to win when. People in the back of their mind, maybe here in Germany especially, may say, well, we're not supposed to be flying as much domestically. Well, is there something changing? Well, I'm, 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 not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to make the argument for domestic flying. What I am trying to say is that if, you, if Lufthansa put all their aircraft, international connections through Frankfurt and Munich, you're going to have to drive there or find some other way of getting there. So leave the domestic flights out. What you're saying is that international connections, how can the largest, uh, the, uh, the, the capital city have 25% less flights here in Berlin? Because charges are going up, it's uncompetitive, and nobody's going to fill the gap. And Lufthansa isn't going to fill it in Berlin. They left years ago. All right. That's Eddie Wilson, CEO of Ryanair. Thank you Thank very you, much Stephen. for your time. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks a lot.